The Russian army is advancing around the city of Avdiv in Donetsk and Kupiansk in Kharkiv region. This was reported by the U.S. Institute for the Study of War. The analysts assess that Russian forces are likely to gain some tactical advantages near Kupiansk but are unlikely to be able to translate them into the broader mechanized maneuvers needed for an operationally significant advance capable of capturing more territory in Kharkiv Oblast and pushing towards the administrative borders of Luhansk and Donetsk Oblasts. It is reported that the Russian troops entered the center of Kislivka, located in the southeast of Kupian, from where they advanced to a depth of 480 meters in the direction of Kotlyarivka. The Kharkiv Regional Administration confirmed that the Russians resumed their offensive in the direction of Kupiansk. Fierce battles are currently taking place for Kislivka, Tabayivka, Sinkivka, Petropavlivka, Stelmaksivka, Berestovoy, Novoyagorivka, Grikivka, Makivka, Nevsky, Turnev, Yampolivka, Torsky, Serebryansk and Bylogorivka. The U.S. Institute notes that the Russian army has advanced to the northwest of Avdiv, especially the central part of Okrutny and west of Solovayovo. It is noted in the information that Russia has taken control of most of the city of Arkhangelsk, located in the northeast of Okrutny and north of Avdiv. In addition, the Russians claim to have advanced 3.85 kilometers wide and 2 kilometers deep in the central part of Arkhangelsk, as well as east of Novoalexandrivka, northwest of Karamik, in the direction of Novopokrovsk and Sokolivka and Pervomaysk to Novelsky, west of Semenivka and Berdichev. UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron pledged £3 billion or US$3.74 billion US dollars in annual military aid to Ukraine for as long as it takes, adding that London has not objected to the use of these weapons to strike targets inside Russia, Cameron said this in an interview with Reuters. Cameron stated that Ukraine has the right to use the weapons provided by London to strike targets on Russian territory and that Kiev should decide whether to do so. Ukraine has that right. Just as Russia is striking inside Ukraine, you can quite understand why Ukraine feels the need to make sure it's defending itself. We will give £3 billion every year for as long as is necessary. We've just really emptied all we can in terms of giving equipment, some of equipment is actually arriving in Ukraine today, while I'm here, he added. Cameron, UK Prime Minister from 2010 to 2016, who only came back to politics a few months ago, met with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmytro Kaleba and President Volodymyr Zelensky during his second visit to Kiev as Foreign Secretary, the UK's most senior diplomat welcomed the US Congress's allocation of the long-awaited $60 billion aid package, stating, It's absolutely crucial, not just in terms of the weapons it will bring, but also the boost to morale that it will bring to people here in Ukraine. However, Cameron did not directly answer a question about his opinion on how the potential re-election of Republican leader Donald Trump to the White House could affect U.S. support for Ukraine, saying, it's not for us to decide who the Americans choose as their president, we will work with whoever that is. He added that Ukraine's ally's strategy should be to ensure Ukraine has the upper hand before the elections in the U.S. in November. Nuclear disaster for Europe, Russia launches kamikaze drones over Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Russian troops are using kamikaze drones over the nuclear reactors of the occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Defense intelligence of Ukraine showed video evidence. The defense intelligence of Ukraine's active actions units have found evidence that the Russians are using drones at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The video from the enemy FPV drone was obtained with the help of electronic intelligence. The footage has UT4D.TT marking, which indicates that the drone was supplied by the Russian Ministry of Defense. The flight path of the Russian kamikaze drone runs over the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant units towards the Ukrainian-controlled Nikopol and Mahanets communities, which are under constant Russian attack. Andriy Cherniak, a representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine says that Russians use the territory of Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to launch drones as Ukrainian troops cannot return fire in the 1.5 kilometer zone around the plant. According to intelligence, the Russian troops have equipped launch pads for their drones near the sixth reactor of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. 
In addition, since the summer of 2023, the Russians have been using the territory of the seized nuclear power plant to train FPV drone pilots. This is done by the so-called Archangel School, which is funded by the main directorate of the general staff of the Russian armed forces. Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. It was occupied by Russians in the first weeks of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The Russians turned Zaporizhia nuclear power plant into a military facility by deploying soldiers and equipment there. The Russian occupiers also mined the territory of the plant. Ukrainian personnel work at the plant, although the Russians sent their so-called management from Moscow. The IAEA monitoring mission is also at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Recently, the Ukrainian military reported that the Russians were preparing provocations at the Zaporizhia NPP. In this case, the Russians may blame Ukraine.